Hey everyone, how is it going? Now, I know there's been two huge questions on everyone's lips. Will he ever make a video on the Carol Khan advanced variation? And yep, gonna do it now. And also, why is he wearing a hat indoors? Is it cold? And to answer that, no. It's just I still haven't had a haircut. My hair is absolutely wild. And I just think it's best for everyone if this stays on. Because the internet is forever and I don't want this hair remembered. And we'll never mention it again. So, to recap on the Carol Khan, we have E4, C6. This is the Carol. They then come down with D4. We come up with the D5. Now, we've already looked at the uh, exchange variation. Where we exchange off the pawns. But today, we are looking at the advanced variation. Where that pawn comes down to the e5. Now you do have to be kind of careful in this position. Things can get really really boxed in and closed off if you're not careful. But as long as you kind of know what you're doing, you know the basic theory, we're going to be absolutely fine. And that's what we're going to look at today. So sit yourself down, get yourself comfy, grab yourself like a cup of tea or whatever, and then um, yeah, let's do the let's do the Carol Khan. So, like I say, with the advance, it's easy to get cramped in, which is why I much prefer just bringing out the bishop straight away to the f5. Just getting it straight out for when this pawn, whoops, when this pawn gets pushed forwards to the e6, it's already out, it's not cramped in, and, you know, it's on this key diagonal there. There is a variation where you can push forwards to the c5 and just directly attack the center, and... This can be quite a fun line. I'm not as big of a fan, but it's all right. You know, they go ahead and capture. We get out the horsey. He gets out his. We push forwards to E6. And you can see these two pawns are going to be key targets for us now. They're kind of floating around in the center, not really doing too much. We're kind of targeting this like this. We'll be bringing out the horsey, cross, pay these guys off. And we're going to have an all right time there. But... I'm not as huge of a fan. Um, now, just to show you how this is going to play out, clearly we are attacking this pawn and black needs to do something about it. So it just makes more sense for him. Get out the bishop and just go ahead and defend it there. Oh, it's gassy. Um, sorry. <coughs> oh my gosh. Now, <laughs> Stockfish from here recommends um, getting out the horsey to the h6. I'm, I'm not as huge of a fan of this, I'm going to be honest with you. I much prefer bringing it across to here on the E7. Um, just to show you, it, they go ahead and take, we take back, and we've now kind of weakened off the king side there. Now, we can just go ahead and just grab that pawn whenever we want. We'll be bringing across the rook onto the nice open file, staring down like that, and we'll be getting castled off to the queen side. It's not the end of the world, you know, it's not too bad, but... Um, it's just castle off to the queen side. It's already a little bit weak there. Um, I much prefer getting castled off to the king side, getting nice and snug there. But, you know, uh, that's what Stockfish recommends. And I know I'm not as smart as of a computer yet. But to me, it just makes more sense coming across like this to the e7. Uh, he then develops out his bishop, just make room for, so he can get castled off. And then we can kind of reroute the um, horsey to here. Have both these guys staring off at this. We're going to be getting this guy out of the way so he can get castled off there. I mean, if he does go ahead and take, don't worry about it. Just castle back, um, sorry, capture back towards the center. Open up the rook. If he does that, we'll once again, we're going to have to get castled off to the queen side, probably there. Just because this rook likes being on a nice open file. Um, but after all that, like I say, I much prefer just bringing out the bishop straight away to the f5 there. He develops out the horsey. We push forwards to the e6. Now the bishop is nice out. It's active. And it just makes more sense to me. White gets the bishop out just to get it, make up a little bit of room to get castled off there. And we develop out our horsey. Now... There is a line where you can push forwards the c5 pawn straight away and just start attacking. And if he goes ahead and captures, that is wonderful for us. Because now our dark square bishop is just so active. And you can see from the analysis bar, it's just jumped right up in our favour there. Um, but more than likely what he's going to do... Oh, pardon me, sorry, it's so gassy. Um, is develop out his other bishop. Just, you know, adding in that extra layer of defense. We capture the pawn, he captures back, and then we bring across our horsey two here onto the e7. Now, we would love for him to go ahead and capture. If he does, he takes, we take, and once again, you can see an Alaspa jump up in our favor. The horsey loves being on this f5 square. It's just such a commanding kind of position here. Um, we're threatening all kinds of shenanigans. It really loves being there. But Again, more than likely, what you'll see is I'm just something like develop out as other horse. He maybe get castled off, something like that.
So we just keep developing this normal, get your other horsey out, start, you know, putting a lot more pressure on the centre, we're putting pressure on this pawn, putting pressure up here, if he goes ahead and takes, works out wonderful for us, we just capture back, and then we are still threatening this pawn here. More than likely though, you're probably just going to see him just start, you know, rerouting this horsey round to here, um, adding in the extra layer of defence onto this pawn. And from here, get your rook, nice open file there, he gets castled off, and then bring across the bishop to here. Now we want to get rid of this guy just because he's you know adding in that extra layer of defense there now he's gonna have plans of pushing forwards this at some point so he'll want to bring across his other rook there go ahead do the exchange and then go ahead and capture that pawn brilliant uh, we are now a pawn up he gets his other uh, rook into play we capture do the exchange there and then bring up the queen to the d7 main reason we're doing that is just because you know he's gonna have all kinds of plans you know bring it across to here all kinds of shenanigans so just making a little bit of room there now you can see the dark square bishop is a little bit blocked in if you're ever kind of stuck in this position because once you do that we'll end up doing the exchange i'd be looking at doing the fian kettle so push forwards the g6 do the fian kettle get castled off to the king's side there and that fan kettle is something that you do see fairly often within the advanced variation. It's something that I do time and time again. I really like having the bishop here or on this lovely diagonal, kind of threatening all kinds of mischief there. And it just makes your king feel a lot more snug and stuff when it's all castled off. So let's just bring this all the way back to where were we here. So instead of pushing forwards that c5, you can actually just go ahead and get the horsey out straight away. That's fine. He goes off and gets castled out. And then we push forwards the c5. I mean, if he goes ahead and takes, that's absolutely fine. We are a pawn down, but don't worry about it. We do actually get some decent development out of it. Now, don't be bringing out this horsey first. What we want to be doing is bringing this horsey across to here. Staring down, putting the pressure on here. And then we'd be looking at bringing across this guy onto the d7 there and that way this guy will be staring at both of these we'll be pairing everything up there and we're going to have some really nice development there he'll come across with the bishop just adding in that extra layer of defense because of this makes the most sense there and like i say just bring out the horsey there and you can see we are going to be targeting this we're going to be targeting this we'll be getting castled off to the king's side there it's fairly straightforward stuff um alternatively Instead of capturing, you might actually just see him go ahead and push forwards that pawn. Now, it's going to be tempting to go ahead and capture. I will just leave it for now and just develop out the horsey. Um, just get more pieces into play and just get your minor pieces more involved there. If he goes ahead and takes, that's absolutely fine. Capture back with your other pawn. We goes and takes and then we can just bring our other horsey across. Once again, both of these guys staring across like that. If for some reason he decides to go ahead and do the queen exchange, that works out brilliant for us. Our rook is on a nice open file there. You can see by the analysis bar, it's a 0.0, .0 completely even position there. Yes, we are a pawn down, but we have this guy on a nice open file. This guy is super active. These guys are probably going to pick off that pawn at some point. We're probably going to pick off this at some point. We're going to have an all right time there. And if instead he doesn't go ahead and do the queen exchange, then he just comes out and does something like, you know, develops as normal. Then we just move our bishop out the way, make a little room so we can get castled off. Horsey comes out, we get castled off. And again, we're in a fairly evenish position. Very, very slight advantage to white, but it's completely negligible. Uh, once again, we're going to be targeting this. We're going to be trying to make this a target. We're going to be getting the rook onto the open file there. Um, we'll have an absolutely fine time. But yeah, there we have the advance. Um, now, there are a few more lines and variations. I, I just don't have time to go through all of them. Um, I'm a few of these deep. I'm starting to feel it, and I'm about to go out, so... Sorry. But, um, I mean, you get the kind of key ideas and concepts there. We're going to be trying to get this guy out early, um, closing off the gate there. some point, we're going to be pushing forwards that c5. That's always going to be a key move for us. I like going for the fee and kettle. And, um, yeah, we're just going to be relying fairly heavily on the uh, rook, um, the horses there. Just manipulating them around, just getting them very, very active there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, drop a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you really liked it. Uh, we nearly have a thousand and, you know, I'd really like to get there. Um, I hope you guys have a wicked weekend. And um, yeah, I'll catch you all later. Bye.